hello and you're very welcome back to another episode of Why the Long Face, a podcast with me, Horse O'Keefe. This week, lads, we got something a bit different. I'm doing a live Q&A on TikTok. So I'm going to have my followers ask me all sorts of random questions and I'm just going to throw out the answers and see how controversial I can get. I've already been asked some and I know that I'm probably going to end up losing followers. But anyway, we'll get straight into it. Okay, so stupidly, when I decided to do like a, a live q and I thought, oh, I'll get really interesting questions like, oh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Or, you know, like, what's your dream summer's day or something like that? No, the first question I got was, if you were a type of baked good, what would you be? I mean, to be honest, I'm not even entirely sure where do I start with that? I'd be something sweet anyway. I'm definitely not rich. 100% not rich. I'm not really fancy either. Do you know what I'd be? I'd be one of those, what are they called? Are they called fairy cakes? They're like the normal buns, but you cut the top off and you slice it in two and then you put a bit of cream on it and you kind of angle it. So it's like an arse sticking out at the top and you kind of put the dust in, dust in the sugar on it. Because I'm kind of fancy, but I'm also not. Butterfly buns. Sorry, I don't, I don't know where I got fairy cake from. That's a, probably a whole other thing. Anyway, next question. Tato or King crisps in a tato sandwich? I really wanted to hold off on the controversy to maybe towards the end of the podcast but no we're just going to get straight into it uh i think the best crisp to go on a tato sandwich is uh walker's cheese and onion and i don't know i just find tato and king to be way too strong and i think walker's is just has that right that right balance i'm, I'm waiting i'm waiting for the comments now i'm waiting to be absolutely shot yeah someone oh no someone's agreed with me there you go i have one person on my side someone else is very upset <laughs> someone else asked what's the first thing you do What's the first thing you'd do if money was no object? I'd probably buy a load of camera equipment and stuff like that, to be honest. Just, like, get myself a whole ass studio with cameras and microphones and all that sort of thing. That would probably be, if money was no option in the morning, that's exactly what I'd, I'd head and do. Someone asked me, am I even Irish? Uh, funnily enough, no, I'm not. <laughs> I was born in England, so that might kind of help you with why I'm answering the way I'm answering. Um, no, I wouldn't buy a house because I don't want a house. No, not currently anyway. Ask me again in 10 years. When we do the, the anniversary podcast, ask me that again. Uh, someone asked, blonde, brunette or ginger? Um, I genuinely don't have a preference. Um, well, I actually do have a preference. It's dyed hair. So my preference is unnatural, the unnatural look. So like something random like fucking bright orange or blue or something like that that would be my my preference but i don't generally have one i'm more just interested in in the person and i realize that that's very sappy and very kind of but you know look i'm here to tell the truth lads. now i did answer this one before we started but i'm gonna do it again because again controversy is key lads uh someone asked me lines or barry's tea uh i really couldn't give a shit to be very honest tay is tay um, I don't like at the moment I'm I'm supping down on the old Dunn's own brand tea bags and they do the job just fine there's absolutely no I have no issue with it there's no problem with it you know I genuinely can't can't tell perfect coffee order see again this changes on the daily some days I'm an old cappuccino man some days I'm a chai latte man you know there's, it's very rare that I get the same thing two days in a row but every, no matter what, I'm getting a nice cup of milk and two sugars. No matter what the coffee is, it doesn't matter. That's happening. After that, I don't know. I don't like anything too strong. Like, I don't like anything that's going to blow my socks off. I just like something nice. And I always like to have something nice with, with the coffee. Do you know, like an old bun or something. An old fairy, an old fairy cake or something. <laughs> uh, would you rather be six foot four and extremely skinny or five foot one and muscly? Well, I'm already six foot four and muscly, so I uh, no, I'm not. Um, I think I'd rather be five foot one and muscly, to be honest. I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be massively tall and massively skinny, kind of walking around like a fucking slender man. Like, um, no, I'd rather be five foot one and muscly. Someone asked me, what's my best worst joke? Now, I would argue that this is not a bad joke. It's actually a very good joke. But so there's this lad, and he wants to ask the most popular girl to school to the Debs. So he decides one lunchtime that he's going to ask her to the dip. So he walks up 
but because she's so popular there's like a massive line of lads there's like a, a lot like there's a queue like a line of lads waiting to ask her but she's just saying no to all of them and uh he eventually gets up to her anyway and he asks her and she says yeah she says yeah to him so he's so he's delighted like so he a couple of weeks go by he goes down to the suit shop one day to get his suit sorted for the debs um goes in massive line of lads because you know they're obviously all getting their getting their suit sorted for the debs um but he goes in anyway waits in line gets sorted happy days gets to the day of the debs he goes over to, to the girl's house to you know take all the photos and, and all that lovely stuff but because again the day of the debs is like a lot of her family there so he has to wait in line basically to get into the house but he gets in eventually takes all the photos does all the, all the nice bits grand so they, they go off then they get onto the bus go off to the hotel get to the hotel because there's obviously so many of them going in there's a big line of them waiting to go in so he's waiting in line again they eventually get into the room and he asks you one he's like oh do you need anything can i do anything for you she says i'd love a glass of punch and he looks around but there's no punch line now i know that i can't hear anyone but i can hear you saying i can hear people on tiktok audibly being like oh for the love of fuck because i've just wasted a good minute of your lives but i honestly i think it's one of my favorite jokes ever because of the fact that i did it one time and i genuinely i kept i added in loads of bits like that he went to the florist that he was you know waiting for waiting to get on the bus all these things i made it go on for about a minute and a half before i finally said that there was no punchline um someone asked me my best pickup line Ooh, i've never really used pickup lines to be honest they weren't it was never really my thing um i normally just chat absolute nonsense until um i basically wear them down no that's awful <laughs> the only pickup line i can ever actually remember using is um and I can't even fully remember the phrasing of it, but you'd basically ask them, like, are you in a garden? Or is something about that? And then they're like, what? And then you're like, no, I've completely fucked this. This is why I don't use pickup lines. Basically, the end of it is, um, oh, oh no, it's we should go, we should be in a garden together. Or, oh God, no, I'm, this is why I don't do pickup lines. Basically, the whole thing of it is, I should, we should put my two lips and your two lips together. That's the whole end of it. But again, I don't fucking... I don't use pickup lines. I don't need them. <laughs> Question: Why are you so cute? Um, probably genetics have got to do with it. Um, I'm just kind of class. I don't know. I don't know why I'm so cute. It's just kind of I am the way I am. That's that's kind of it. It is a wonder I haven't been fucking snapped up though. Um, someone else asked me something there. What's the turn off for you? Oh, um, definitely someone who doesn't understand mental health for for one thing i just, i can't because obviously mental health is a very big big part of of my life and and it's something that i struggle with so if i'm going to be with someone i'm going to need someone to understand mental health and how it works and not be like are you still not over this or why are you so sad now all these kind of things um that's probably one fairly major turn off oh if they don't like movies or if your favorite, if if we're chatting away and you're like, oh, my favorite movie is something like Mean Girls or something really basic like that, that's just kind of a turn off. And I realize that's possibly very harsh and possibly very snobby of me, but you know, it is what it is. I I'm mad into movies and I need someone to be able to chat about movies and kind of deliberate movies with me, not just be like, yeah, I like Fast and Furious. A time that if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. Jeez, there's been a few of those. I honestly think the time that I I went to the doctor first about my mental health and I broke down crying inside her office and I she was like I'll give you a number for a counsellor and she went on her system and she started laughing because the, the first number that came up on their system was my dad's number because my dad is a qualified counsellor I laughed then because I didn't really know what else to do but it is also just kind of funny uh, do, do, do. what's the last thing you read uh, I read the abracababra menu on just eat it's probably the, <laughs> probably the last thing I read what if they're not used to that but they're trying their best to understand their own mental health see that's fine that's different I can I'm able to separate so like if it's a case that someone has either never been through mental health stuff and they genuinely don't understand it but they're willing to learn that's fine um, or if it's a case that they're not used to it but again, they're willing to learn. That's fine. I, so the my the issue where it will become a turn off is where they're not willing to learn, and they're just very close minded about mental health. Like literally, it happened to me a couple of a couple of weeks ago. Someone was like, 
um, about my my granddad's death, they were like, "Are you not over that?" No, fair enough. It's coming up in four years, but there's there's no linear thing for dealing with stuff. Um, so that something like that would be a turn off. But if it's a case that they've just never experienced mental health stuff, but they're willing to learn and they're open minded that's fine do you know what i changed my answer my turn off is closed mindedness to fucking anything if you're not willing to learn then yeah no fuck off <laughs> do you ever get over it no you don't i don't think you ever get over losing someone you never really get over any of these things because wait getting over it means that you're like instantly better then I think you you learn you definitely learn to accept it, but I don't think you ever get over it. I don't think you ever get past these things. Like you never forget about them, but you accept them and you work your way through them, kind of a thing. I think there's a major difference between accepting something and getting over it. I think people put too much focus on, oh, it's been a certain amount of time now. I need to get over it. You never need to get over it. Getting over it implies that you have to put it completely behind you, and you don't because all of these things are learning learning experiences what is a song that will get you up dancing uh ymca like all the time because it became a thing years ago like when i was still living at home if we were going out pre-drinking um one night at pre-drinks i got particularly drunk and i just randomly came out with like so ymca came on in the house i randomly like pushed everyone aside and like did this whole choreographed dance thing just on the spot and I ended up also taking my tap off so then it just became a thing that anytime YMCA comes on horse takes his tap off now I've gotten better at it since in fairness um, like sometimes YMCA comes on in the shop and obviously you know I can't take my tap off because um, that would be fairly frowned upon <coughs> excuse me uh, so yeah I don't take my tap off YMCA anymore but I still do the choreographed dance Someone asked me what's my karaoke number. Would you believe I've never done karaoke? Especially like in since I've discovered that I'm actually somewhat of a, a decent singer. I haven't actually done karaoke at any point. So I don't even know what my go-to would be. I'm gonna say it'd be something stupid like Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. Just for like getting the whole crowd involved kind of a thing. Yeah, it'd probably be something like that. Or something Michael Bublé or something Johnny Cash maybe. Or Johnny Be Good, I like that one too. Oh my god, there's too many. No lads, I'm not singing no, I'm doing a podcast. It's a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing. Jesus Christ. Can't do anything with you. And definitely, definitely not you two. I do not like you two. You two are overrated and you two need to fuck off. Actually no, Bono needs to fuck off. Where what county are you from? I'm from Limerick. Um Stab City. Yes, I'm from Stab City, but I've never stabbed someone. Well, I ha well, I have, but not with a knife actually i'm gonna stop that one now that's not something that needs to be discussed um i've never been stabbed with a knife nor have i ever stabbed oh that's not true i did stab someone i stabbed my best friend <laughs> okay so i have to give the context context my fucking voice is breaking <laughs> when we were about 15 16 um we were making silly videos on our phones and my friend was like asleep in bed and I was like an intruder that broke in and we had this little fight scene choreographed and we decided to use a real knife because we were 15 and stupid and my best friend fell on the knife. So technically I didn't actually stab him, he genuinely fell on the knife but it, it, it went into his wrist which was obviously very dangerous and I probably could have killed him but I didn't. Anyway, uh, what would your last meal be? Ooh, I'd say it'd be an old slab of lasagna and chips and a big old thing of coleslaw beside it and a pint of milk if money was no issue what would you do with yourself i would cover myself in tattoos i have about 30 odd if not more tattoo ideas there um so yeah i just go in there one day and just be like get it all done um is this the same friend whose fingers finger you mangled uh yeah it is it is the same guy that uh that's finger, that's finger that I mangled. I've, so I cut off his finger in junior infants. Um, I stabbed him when we were 15. And I um, stuck my tooth into his head when we were, I'm going to say, around eight or nine. Lasagna and milk. Well, yeah, but obviously, like, the, 
it's a glass of milk and like a thing of lasagna, not like mixing the two together. Let's point a pint of milk with, with basically any dinner just makes it better. And I'm, I'm not gonna go any further with that. I'm not gonna hear any arguments with that. That's that is just fact. Marshmallows with hot chocolate, yes or no? Uh, yes, but only a small few. I don't like when people throw them out, like too many in, and then not like because you can't get the hot chocolate then, and then you like try and take a big sip, and you end up burning your fucking lip. What's your go-to snack bar treat for yourself? Um, again, that really changes. I am a whore for an old donut. No, I don't know. Does that really count? I suppose it technically does. Um, but yeah, no probably a donut of any kind really um the scariest thing you've ever done uh become an adult <laughs> that shit's fucking scary um and it's not getting any less scary barbecue summer night out the back with the people you want or an average night out okay can i say both there's like there's pros and cons for each like because well, like, currently I live in an apartment so I don't really have an out the back um, to put anyone in um, and like again it's rare enough that you'd actually have a fine evening to do any of that with but I, I do enjoy a, a grand night like an old quiet night out sometimes are even the best crack because it's just a smaller group of people and it's just good chats any irrational fears mine is clowns uh, so I'm afraid of needles I have a couple of weird fears so I'm afraid of needles but I'm, I'm obviously covered in tattoos um i'm afraid of uh flying but i really want to like travel uh i really really love cars but i'm afraid of driving um and i'm afraid of talking on the phone i hate talking on the phone like i, get, I have a genuine fear of talking on the phone i worked in a call center for like two and a half years so you know i would pretty i would kind of categorize all of those things as very irrational do i like teddies i do and i don't um i don't just like any random sort of a teddy the teddies like i have a couple of teddies there that i like one from the claw machines because i happen to be uh good at them or i like a teddy like i had a, a an er teddy for years because er is just a character who kind of resonates with me but um i don't have that now because i gave it to someone and then i don't i no longer talk to that person so they have it and that's very fucking annoying um someone read that wrong and thought they were asking me do i like titties um just in case anyone is wondering yes yes i do you can't be good at a claw machine it's pure luck no you're wrong you can be good at it because you have to just go for the one that's easiest to go for and not necessarily the teddy that you want you can't be like, oh, I want the big Batman. Sometimes you just have to go for the shitty Aquaman, like, you know, and that's... Ooh. Things you notice first in a prospective partner. Uh, eyes. Have to have a, a good set of eyes, like a nice set of eyes, because I'm very much about um, making eye contact when I'm talking and not talking. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, eyes eyes are normally the first thing I, I kind of notice or tattoos to be honest deep blue or deep brown eyes um i don't have like a, a color that i like specifically prefer it's just nice eyes bright eyes kind of vibrant eyes something that just like draws me in it's very annoying because like I've, like that genuinely is the true answer but because my brain is fucking filled the first thing was like uh boobies but you know obviously you shouldn't be don't be objectifying people lads it's not funny and it's not sound and you can't be doing that well there's no point in ye on tiktok trying to look at me because i can't see ye so i don't know how nice your eyes are or aren't the joys of the internet people when is the last time you laughed till your stomach hurt uh last night um so one of my housemates had been on holidays in finland for a week so they came back so then like all like me and my two housemates were all just like out chatting and kind of catching up or whatever and we we're just having the crack and i can't even fully remember what was said and even if i did and tried to explain it now it wouldn't make sense but it was just very nice to have everyone kind of back and chatting again and i ended up i think i actually nearly spilled tea everywhere or spat tea everywhere even 
stupid move your TV moment that only makes you burst out laughing and no one else. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's that it doesn't make anyone else laugh, but it's definitely an underrated one. Uh, is the world's end? Um, it's the film. It's the third film in the Cornetto trilogy with like Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, and um, there's a line in that where one of them is like, "We're gonna end up dead in a field." I hate fields and it's just I think it's fucking hilarious because it's like the most random possible thing to like of all the things to be worrying about in that situation why is that what you're worrying about <laughs> who is the most motivational person in your life you know what I'm going to say something now and it's going to sound extremely extremely up my own arse but it's me I'm so proud of the progress I've made in the last couple of months that like, I genuinely am motivated by myself. Um, and I think that's actually very important is that you should be motivating yourself and you should be motivated by yourself and you should find yourself motivational. Like I could be on a live on TikTok or I could just be talking to someone and I'll just be giving a bit of advice or just talking about like a life situation and afterwards I'm like, Jesus, I actually make a lot of sense. Like during the week one of the lads I was, I was chatting with and I was genuinely giving him advice and I got a great kind of buzz off that because like I know 90% of the time that I'm doing a good job but when you have someone else coming to you and, and telling you that your advice is actually helping you know that's that's all I need you know that's like a fucking pat on the back um, who's my celebrity crush? Well, half the people in the comments have already started answering. Um, if it's like female, I, I honestly don't know. It changes constantly. It, to be honest, it, it changes depending on what I'm watching. Um, and like, I'm, I'm straight. I have no interest in men, except for one man. There's one man on this earth that I just think is fucking drop dead gorgeous and like I'm trying not to get too sexual. Um Robert Sheehan, Irish actor, he was in Misfits, he was in Love Hate, he was in the Umbrella Academy. I just think that man is gorgeous and he's got such a like well physically fucking just stunning, stunningly beautiful man. But he's also it's his personality it's the way he talks about things he's just got such an eloquent way of talking and a really unique way of putting things and I just yeah no I think I love him um, what would you be watching horse? well I'm not watching anything dirty like it just it depends on what movies I'm watching at the time or if I'm watching a particular TV show like Cameron Diaz has always been a celebrity crush like always um, who else have we got Halle Berry has always, always been a crush. Like, I, I don't know, just, honestly, there's too many. I can't can't think of any. Does, does Jessica Rabbit count? I know she's not real, and she's a cartoon, and that's a whole other thing. Oh, Cheryl Cole back in the day. Oh, Jesus, lads, I was obsessed with Cheryl Cole. I wrote a story in, like, f I'm going to say fourth class, about how I was so in love with Cheryl Cole that I had a rope ladder, and I climbed up the side of her house and broke in. I don't know why I just said that. That's very problematic and very fucking weird, horse. I'm just going to probably edit that bit out. Anyway. <laughs> Who's my favourite TikToker? Oh, Christ. I honestly don't know. Like, there's a lot of TikTokers I follow that are, like, obviously the big like big ones. Like, they've got a couple of hundred thousand or a couple of million followers. And, like, I really like them because they're either funny or they're really motivational or whatever. But like, there's also a lot of like smaller followers that are smaller TikTokers that I really like who I've only met because of because of doing TikTok and like we followed each other when we both had only a couple of hundred and we've kind of grown together. Like TikTok has given me some amazing friends. No, it's very strange because I've never actually met any of these people in real life yet. I will, but I honestly I don't think I can answer that one. I don't have. Uh, I don't have a favourite TikToker. Someone asked me what's my most embarrassing moment. Jesus. 
Jesus, I don't know. Oh, potentially the time that I was walking out of the shower here in the apartment and my other housemate was walking out of his room and my towel dropped and he saw everything. That was kind of embarrassing. Not only was that embarrassing, but it actually happened again a couple of months after that. Um, biggest no in friendship or relationship, uh, people not being open and honest. Like from day one, you just have to be open and honest about everything. And if you're not, that's a big no-no for me. That genuinely just like, I can't. I can't do that. Like I can't be dealing with, oh, you said this four weeks ago and that upset me. If I do something wrong, or even just not even wrong, just like open about your past, open about like what you want in the future, open about all these things. You just have to be open and honest. Like there's no point in hiding things. So I think sometimes people hide things because they think it's protecting the person, but if anything, it just makes things a lot more difficult. Any bad date stories? No, because like really, I actually haven't even really gone on that many dates, to be honest. Any of the dates I have gone on have been perfectly lovely. It just obviously hasn't worked out with that person for one reason or another. I don't, I've never really had a bad date had fucking expensive dates <laughs> but uh no i've never had a bad date the weirdest internet rabbit hole you ever went down um so i was watching um the film legend which has got tom hardy in it he plays the cray twins who were like gangsters in london um so I was looking into that and then I came across this interview on uh, Lad Bible, no sorry Unilad, uh, with a reformed British gangster and then I ended up getting stuck down this rabbit hole of like gang, like gang crime in London in like the 60s. What that has got to do with me, I have no idea. But there you go, that's how the internet works, you just get stuck and you keep clicking links and keep, keep, like, keep on going down literally rabbit holes. Uh, best night out oh Christ there's been a lot of good nights out like I said earlier sometimes it's the quiet nights where you go out. I remember one night um, it was when I finished up in one job in particular a couple of us went out and we went out at like 9 o'clock and I had to go home by like half 11 with my friend because we both just got for whatever reason we just got way too drunk way too fast um, but like we ended up going back to my house and like just talking and making like the videos and pictures from that night are honestly fucking hilarious like there's pictures of me standing in my kitchen with my pants around my ankles like I still have my jocks on I don't know where my t-shirt was gone and I had a little man bun thing at the time and I was just looking in the in the press like no idea like but it's, it's all those little random things to be honest sometimes I actually nearly enjoy the ends of nights out more where you get like when you get back to like a house or you get back to your place and you're just like you're eating your food and you're just kind of chilling and you're chatting i think that's those those conversations and those parts of the night out are sometimes the best parts the pettiest opinion you will fight people over well again i think well there's the tea bags like the brand of tea bag doesn't matter uh, the Batman that the new Batman that came out is one of the worst things I've ever seen in cinema um, I think going for dinners like out to restaurants is extremely overrated and it's not that the chefs don't do a good job or anything like that it's just that I have I've worked uh, in a food distribution company so I saw what like they pay to get it versus what we pay to eat it and that just really really fucking annoys me a film I'll never get tired of watching. Um, there's a lot. Like Small Soldiers is like obviously one of my one of my favorite ones. Um, the Dark Knight I could watch that forever. Spider Man No Way Home I could watch that forever. Basically anything that's in like my top kind of eleven movies. Um, and yes, it, I did say top eleven. It was the top ten. But then I remembered like two movies and uh, yeah, so I have a top eleven. 
uh, GA or football or neither, none. I couldn't give a fuck about any sport, to be very honest with you. I'm just not interested at all. If someone asks me emo or goth girls, um, I don't really have a preference. And to be honest, I'll be very honest, I'm not entirely sure what, like, what the difference is either. I could be very ignorant to this now. As far as I'm aware, like the, the general aesthetic is similar enough and it's the aesthetic that I'm interested in. I'm not entirely sure about the rules and regulations. Regulations, Jesus Christ. This is an absolute shit show of a podcast. My voice keeps breaking. I'm fucking snapping left, right and center. <sighs> yeah, I'm not entirely sure of the rules and regulations of what makes you a goth and what makes you uh, uh, an emo. I, um, and I do apologize for my ignorance. Anime or not? N- not, not, not for me. Um, I did watch a Batman anime once. That was very cool, and I very much enjoyed that. But no, not really. It's not really my thing. Heart has hit puberty. I have. I finally hit puberty. Maybe now my. I won't actually say that. We 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 have managed to get through. If thirteen, if not fourteen episodes of the podcast without talking about my balls, I would rather we continue it that way. Favorite day of the week. I don't, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite day of the week. It all depends on if I'm working that day or not. To be honest, like if you if you're working in a job where you can work any of the seven days of the week, I don't think you have to have a really specific favorite day. Like if if there's a particular TV show that I'm watching and it's like coming out weekly, then that becomes um like when Obi-Wan was coming out like Wednesdays was then my favourite day because me and my housemate would like sit down in the evening time and we'd watch Obi-Wan together but like we're not really watching anything at the moment uh, tell men to check themselves men check your balls make sure you're alright make sure there's nothing weird going on there's nothing weird about it just don't do it in public um, you can only listen to one podcast for the rest of your life what is it oh Christ it would have to oh I'd be stuck between the two Johnny's podcast and Blind Boys podcast. I genuinely like. I, I don't think I can pick between the two. Uh, the first thing you do when you get home, I come in and I take off my pants, and I just sit in bed for about five ten minutes before I like get up and cook my dinner or whatever. I literally come in straight away, take off the pants, and just chill out. Uh, has to be done like. It's just a very relaxing thing. But I do it in my bedroom, by the way. Um, not like in the sitting room or the kitchen um sleep with socks or not very controversially no if it is cold i will sleep with socks on um i haven't recently no because obviously the weather has been ridiculously warm but coming up to coming up to winter time now i'd sleep with the socks on like and again i realize it's controversial People, people, people get the ache over this. Like they genuinely do. Socks in bed, but not has to be done. Like if it's a small old, it's a small old bed. Like you know, and it's a smaller room, but it just be cold. Like and I have no other way of warming myself. Why do you sweat when we nap, but not when we get a full night's sleep? I actually don't know. That's a very good. Maybe it's because it's a short term thing. So your body temperature is like really warm because you've been active all day. Whereas at night time you're relaxed and you're kind of more chill. So your body temperature is more regulated. Perhaps. Maybe. I just know at all. I find that I have more nightmares when I nap than I do when I sleep like at night time. That's just a very random fact about me. Um, ever wax... Ever wax your legs or other body parts? Uh, no. I have never waxed my legs or any other body parts for that matter. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave that one there because that could get very out of hand very fast. Uh, I've been asked have I any hidden talents. Um, well, to be fair, outside of TikTok, not many people know that I actually can sing and play guitar or half play the keyboard. I'm I'm sorry, lads. I don't know what is wrong with my brain this evening, but everything is just turning to filth and stuff that we can't really be talking about because it's not that kind of podcast. Although maybe I could do an old dirty podcast there one time, but. No, we, we we won't we won't go there tonight. Anyway. We'll uh, we'll keep it PG for now. Anyway. 
so I stopped recording because we took a very random tangent into my sex life that I didn't think was was really something that people needed it or, or wanted to, wanted to hear about um so now we've gone back to the the relatively normal questions someone asked me sunday fries or mackie's breakfast uh, i don't really eat breakfast i do get a mcdonald's coffee most mornings when i go to work though so i mean if mcdonald's coffee counts as mcdonald's breakfast then technically mcdonald's breakfast is my choice i'll say one thing though those mcdonald's hash browns they're fucking decent if you, if, you, if you haven't had McDonald's hash brown lads, go out and get one. Small local chipper or chain. Ah, oh, small local chipper. Every day of the week. Every day of the week. Because there's more love in it. And there's not as much MSG in it. Uh, sweet or savoury? Ooh, sweet. Has to be sweet. I've tried savoury. Like, like, well, it depends. Like, if I'm snacking, it has to be sweet. Like if I when I was doing my weight loss and shit like that, I was trying to like eat savory nonsense like fucking nuts and raisins and all that. And like, bleh, no, no good. Chinese or pizza? It really, really depends on the day, or it depends on how bad the hangover is. Like some days I'll decide I want a takeaway, but then it takes me ages to actually decide which one I want. Or it also depends on. Am I getting it just for myself? Am I getting it for some like with someone else? Is is the whole apartment getting takeaway? You know, all these things factor in. It's not just as simple as Chinese or pizza. You know, are we getting it on Just Eat or Uber Eats? Does anyone have a code for Uber Eats so that we can get twenty five percent off? These are all the big things. Pineapple on pizza? Yes, hundred percent because pineapple goes well with lots of things. Pineapple is in many many dishes, and when people say pineapple is a fucking fruit would you put strawberries on a pizza of course you wouldn't put fucking strawberries on a pizza because that doesn't make sense how many other recipes in the world have strawberries in them that aren't desserts obviously pineapple can go on a stir fry lads pineapple can go on a sweet and sour so yes pineapple can go on a pizza and i won't like that's one petty thing that i'll fucking follow with someone over is when people are like it doesn't belong it does belong do you do the little run when someone holds the door for you or not? 100%. Who doesn't do the little run? I'll tell you who doesn't do the, the, the little run. Ignorant bastards. That's who doesn't do the little run. If someone's holding the door for you, you kind of do the... Oh, and you kind of just increase increase the pace a bit. like. Unless you're an absolute tool bag, in which case you're like, nah, fuck them. I've done it before where I was holding a door and this fucking gobshite in like a suit and he had a Bluetooth earpiece thing in. I was holding the door and he looked at me and if anything it seemed like he was walking slower so I just let the door go I let the door close fuck him he annoyed me and he also had those stupid like blue tinted sunglasses yeah he just annoyed me have you ever gone to scare someone and scared the wrong person yeah it happened to me in work a couple of weeks ago um, like if you're at the back stairs and someone is coming in you can hear them like putting in the code and when I was walking out, I knew that one of the lads was going on his break. So I just happened to be in the back stairs. I heard someone coming in. I assumed it was him. So I hid and I jumped out and went, um, but it was actually my manager. And he, he, he called me some very, very not nice words. Favorite holiday or celebration? Um, I like Halloween. I like dressing up. Because I've always been really into like cosplay and stuff. And it's something that I've never really gotten into as much as I probably should have or would like to um, but probably yeah although Easter is kind of good because you get lots of chocolate does your birthday count I like my birthday because like, like I get presents uh, I don't like Christmas Christmas can fuck off my last Halloween costume was I went as the Joker because I spent a stupid amount of money on a leather jacket um, like a, a purple leather jacket so that I could do like a proper Joker look like the jacket is it's fucking unreal um, but I did spend like 180 quid on it or something but this was when I was a supervisor I was on that supervisor money am I going to dress up this year uh, yeah I'm going to dress up as a sexy school girl I'm not going to dress up as a sexy school girl I, I did that once and I nearly caught my death with the cold travel to the past or the future uh the future i wouldn't want to go to the past because i i've gone through a lot of stuff in the past and i've probably fucked something up 
because if I went back I wouldn't be able to stay quiet and I'd probably like movie logic tells you that if you do anything in the past other than exactly what happened you fuck up everything but I, um, so I wouldn't do that I'd love to go to the future just to see how the world ends up and kind of how I end up or what I end up doing or where I end up going kind of thing what do you do when you're feeling low anything that helps you when I feel low it really depends sometimes when I feel low I will deliberately do things that make me feel worse like listen to really sad music or watch a really sad movie and there's absolutely no logic behind it I don't know why it's just some, it's something that everyone does I think I think it's just like a, a weird subconscious thing that we do we're like I don't like I feel really shit but I don't want to actively do anything that's going to make me feel better sometimes you just do sh- shit that's going to make you feel either worse or make you at least just stay at the same level of sad um but when I do want to feel better I'll normally try and cook myself a nice dinner or I'll try and hang out with like my housemates or one of my friends or something or I'll try play a bit of music that generally helps um because I'll play songs that like it's just impossible to be sad when you're listening to or playing or singing what superpower would you have uh i would love to be able to control time so i pause time but then i can still move kind of thing i'd probably end up just robbing a lot of shit i'd like pause time go into harvey norman rob like a rake televisions and stuff i realized that i could probably do a lot better with a superpower but I'm being selfish and I, like I said I'd rob a lot of stuff or I'd rob a bank or I'd rob something so I'm gonna finish up now but I have one last question question to answer what is my biggest dream in life and to be honest I'm not fully uh, like sure yet of where I want to go or what I want to do like job wise I have multiple different things that I'd like to try and do but I'm not like necessarily fully set on one so I don't really have like a dream job or a dream anything like that. The one thing that I know that I'm, I'm dreaming of and that I'm striving for is to be consistently content. And I say that rather than saying happy because I think people strive for happiness a lot. And happiness is a very, very big thing to strive for. Because happiness is a very, like, I couldn't describe happiness like fully. Like Joe people say, I want to be happy all the time. Like that's very unrealistic that's why I say consistent contentment because like at the moment I've been consistently content for about I'm gonna say about a month and a half maybe two months and it, it just means that like life hasn't stopped like the shit things are still happening and I'm still getting like the the negative thoughts or the bad thoughts in my head but they're not affecting me as much because I have this kind of contentment. I have this knowledge of, okay, it's okay. And I know what to do with them. So I think if you strive for contentment and just being consistently content, where you're you're content in yourself, you're content in what you're doing and you're content in who you are, life will be a whole lot easier. So I think that's a pretty good place to, to leave it for this week lads thank you to everyone on my lovely tiktok who was giving me lots of lovely questions you probably found out many many different things about me today that you probably never knew before and for the next week lads just just think about what you're what you're striving for in life and how do you flip that or how do you try and grow to be consistently content Mind yourself.